I'm going to get out clean, I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a couple of years ago, you gave a list of your best movies of the year. Could you give some of your recommendations this time? How much did I pay you to ask that question? <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. Okay, so, you know, it was an odd year. And it was odd because the more I talked to my colleagues in the business, well, we all have films that we like, but we had a hard time getting really excited. And yet, when you go through the films, there were a bunch of good films, but the sort of feeling was that it was sort of like a, mm, a fiction of a vintage, you know, it's okay. Uh, but I liked a lot of films. Here are the films that, that uh, I liked. One of them was confusing to me uh, in, as to whether it could be included or not. And that was a film, a French film, called Summer Hours. Lure de Tegne. Um, did any of you see that film? Fabulous film. Uh, it was truly, the reason it was, I was confused is it was unclear as to whether it could be considered a 2009 film or a 2008 film. And various publications decided differently because of its release pattern. A story uh, by uh, uh, a great French director about the, the passage of, a, of the artistic legacy of the family uh, from uh, from one generation to the next, and what happens to the, that family. And it really said everything that there was to say about the modern world in a way, but in particular about France. So if it, if it could be included, uh, it would be my number one film, and then I would go home. But if it couldn't be included, then it started with the more sort of nuts and bolts films that came out during the course of the year that I liked. Uh, the Hurt Locker is a film that I thought was really particularly good, and that which has gotten a lot of critical back here. Another film that, um, I don't even know whether I liked it. Um, it was called The Antichrist by Lars von Trier. Did any of you see that? Well, it's sort of George and Martha, uh, you know, from um, uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf for 2000, except gone completely insane. Uh, it's the story of a marriage and its descent into hell. Uh, very graphically violent. Um, it was at the Cannes Film Festival. And it really divided audiences almost immediately into whether it was a stunt cinema or whether it was something else. And I said, well, you know, we really have a cinema that has been afraid of showing truly adult cinema and adult images. Um, and even before I know whether I liked it, I have found myself defending it on the basis of, well, you know, everybody says they want cinema for grown-ups. You know, that ain't for kids. That's for grown-ups. Why don't you give it more respect? So I, I you know, it's a, a problematic film. And I, ultimately, I think a film that, that is about the disintegration of a marriage um, and has a heavy therapeutic kind of dialogue is not something that I like, but I ended up thinking it's, well, it's beautifully made and it's a great, it's really um, a fearless film. It's watching fearless cinema, and I respect fearless cinema. Um, I liked a film called Sinombre about uh, immigration, which was at Sundance last year, Colombian immigration. I liked a serious man, the Coen Brothers film. And, and I'll tell you why, I'm Jewish. I never saw a film attack the rabbit uh, the way this film attacks the rabbit. Uh, my father's dying words to me were, no rabbis, you know? And <clears throat> so I come from a long anti-clerical uh, lineage. Um, I, it harked back to a tradition that started in the late 60s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, where Jewish writers felt comfortable enough in America to begin to uh, look at the hypocrisies of the growth uh, of, of Judaism in America, and what were the, the things that were wrong and what were the things that were right. You know the names of the writers, Bellow, Malamud, uh, Roth, particularly Roth. Roth was sort of considered to be the, the downtown trash version of, of Bellow and, uh, and Malamud. Because they talked about the American dream, and, and Roth talked about the, the obscenity of the American Jewish community in, in an organized fashion. And so you had, you know, what's his name, Portnoy masturbating into a piece of liver. Well, that was the, you know, that scandalized people, but what it showed was a, a, a community that felt at com at comfortable enough in a post war context to take on um, the, the sort of hypocrisies of its own community. And that vanished. That vanished starting in the 70s. The Jewish community has been very silent artistically about, you know, about itself. 
And so to walk into this serious man was to walk into a time warp and see a film that was behaving like a 1960s film about the Jewish community, in which he located the problem inside the community as being a problem of the rabbinate, and it attacks the rabbinate, among many other things. So, now that may get all kinds of people stirred up here in the audience, I don't know, but I thought it was, a, it was like I say, I like fearless cinema, and that was a pretty fearless piece of cinema. I like the film called Cold Souls with Paul Giamatti, um, a little Sundance film that went nowhere. Men Who Stare at Goats um, with George Clooney, I don't know if you saw that, it was a good year for George Clooney. My number seven film was Cloud Nine, which I already mentioned. I like Where the Wild Things Are a whole bunch. Uh, I thought that was just an absolutely wonderful piece of work that basically sort of got shoved out of the way for the fall of releases. I like George Clooney again in Up in the Air, um, Josh Reitman, uh, or Jason Reitman, excuse me. Uh, I thought it was a wonderful film. I did a great interview with Jason Reitman. Uh, well, he was great. Um, he had a film comment um, in which he talked about his heroes. Do you know the story of Up in the Air? How many of you have seen it? So you know, many of you have seen it. It's basically the story of a commercial uh, for hire uh, a fire, a guy who comes in and fires people, you know, um, uh, at the behest of a corporation. And it's very much in the spirit of Jason Reitman's first film, um, Thank You for Smoking, which, you know, humanized and contextualized the tobacco lobbyist. It's, you know, and, and in Juno, his second film, he's got a pretty you know, 16-year-old who wants to keep the baby. So he's taken a set of characters and, and essentially uh, given them a kind of context that are um, exist inside public stereotypes as being, you know, indefensible and defended them and made them interesting and made them funny. Um, so I love that film. And then the tenth film I liked was uh, The Messenger, the Owen Mover, Oren Moverman film. Did any of you see that? Story about uh, a couple of soldiers who have to go around and tell people um, that their family, their family member, son, daughter, husband, uh, wife, has been killed uh, in action in Iran. And it, Oren Moverman is an Israeli by birth, and he made an American film set in the American uh, military, but it really, you know, his experiences in the Israeli army were what informed this picture. And uh, it was two wonderful performances that sort of lived the different generations between an older by the book generation and a younger generation of, uh, that reflected the younger generation's uh, insistence on telling the truth to people and not being afraid of their emotions when they did it. So it was a great, great film. And I'll tell you the number one film that I didn't like. I hated, hated, hated Inglorious Bastards. Uh, how many of you like? How many of you saw it? How many of you liked it? How many of you didn't like it? Okay. I'll tell you why I hated it. You know. It's because it, it, Quentin Tarantino refuses to grow up um, as an adult. It's like watching a teenager, you know, tell the story of Christ. Um, you know, it, 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 there are certain sacred texts that you can't mess around with. In World War II, with what happened in World War II with with Hitler and with you know with with Jews and all that, it's not something that you turn into a sort of a video game that you can manipulate to your satisfaction. If you're gonna you know, take on that ter that that um, topic. You better have something interesting and new to say.